Hello everyone and welcome to the video where we're going to be walking through the example of a disk or a washer method. Here's the example. Find the volume of the solid obtained by the rotating the region bounded by, and that's the most important information from here, the list of functions that bounded the 2D picture, which will be rotated about some kind of line, x-axis, y-axis, or even something else. And then the next important information is about what the rotation is happening. So in this case, it is happening not about y equals uh, 0, which is x-axis or y-axis. It's actually a completely different line. Let's see what is going on here. Step 1. Let's draw the sketch, uh, the picture, right? So sketch, sketch 2D picture first. Then I first gonna list the functions we're working with. Y equals 1 over x cube. This is the function that looks something like this. Nice. Uh, since I'm being super responsible, I'll be even signing all the functions I'm drawing. Because if you have 5, 10 functions, you will definitely forget very fast which one is which. Color coding helps quite a lot as well. Next one is y equals 0 and that's the same thing as to say x-axis so I will write down that this line will be important that's my y equals to 0 then I have x equals 3 x equals 3 say it's about over here vertical line x equals 3 and finally the purple one x equals 9 let's put it over here x equals 9 and now we definitely have the region here it is my 2d picture 2d region bounded by four lines four graphs as you can see very nice picture so 2d picture is done now carefully present the 3d picture if you can 3d picture for shell methods I do not recommend to grab the 3d picture and I will explain in my different video later so for the disk or washer method 2d, pic 3D picture is important and I will read okay we're actually rotating about y equals minus 4 so I need to find what this line even look like y equals minus 4 is something like this y equals it's height, right? So y equals minus 4 is below x-axis. This green line will be used as a mirror. So imagine it's a mirror, right? Then you will have to flip everything you just draw with respect to this mirror, which means I will recreate all the steps like this. Then I have a nice looking curve like this. And that's actually all. Here's my 2D region. Oh, actually, I need to step away even more, as you can see. So I'm stepping away. Then this line happens first. Then it goes like this. Yes. So this triangle, this, mm, like this, like this, this shape over here should be recreated with the same gap. And this gap, here it is, this is the gap I'm talking about, should be the same. What uh, height of this gap? Minus 4 and minus 4. So this line, for example, is ready at the depth of negative 8. That's what I'm talking about. Because minus 4, we're using as a mirror to reflect everything. So now I'm even going to add a 3D notation, which I personally like, but you don't have to. I'll add a big circle like this. So that my brain can identify that this object is actually 3D with a dashed line on the background, like this. So now my, my eyes, they get used to it more. And I can see it's some kind of like a pipe, right? Piece of pipe which is lying down. Now, 3D picture, done. Now you need to decide which case you're going to use here. Is it case 1 or case 2? And by cases, when I teach... I explained that we can have vertical or horizontal slicing. Basically, is it going to be integral with dx from a to b? Or 
integral with dy uh, from c to d and then inside we're going to have a function with respect to x or a function with respect to y so it depends so versus and that uh, depends on how the sample disk will look like so let's have a sample disk sample disk usually people draw it somewhere in the middle but actually it doesn't matter you can use a sample disk anywhere and then you need to have some kind of width of this sample disk so this is my cut and you see while i'm filling in the thickness of the sample disk where how do i do it i do it from left to right left to right left to right left to right and then if i want to identify how thick this sample disk is sample disk is which thickness we're going to call delta x it should be projected on the x axis right here it is in the x axis that's what i'm going to call delta x and that's how i know that this is case one case one when everything will be from a to b and also we're going to be using function of x and with the x at the end also from a to b it's actually very makes sense that we're going to have have here where the object starts at a and finishes at b so kind of makes sense and let's now do step four finally the calculus starts so this is all was about imagination and seeing what is going on now the calculus actually starts we need to find points of intersections points of intersections to locate a and b where the graph starts oh actually we don't even need to do that in this case it's actually just simple sometimes you have to find those points intersections or not so let me keep this phrase for the general cases but in this case look how lucky we are since i signed all the functions the blue one here is hiding is x equals three and then the purple one is x equals 9, and those are exactly two walls that start and finish the object on the x-axis. So A is actually 3, and then B is 9. Very nice. Now, I can start building the integral, and it's going to be, I usually kick out pi outside, but remember, it's integral pi r squared. From 3 to 9, and it's going to be dx at the end. What is happening inside? So if you want to know the original story the original story that this is the integral from a to b and then there's the area a of x that's how we chose the function will depends on x now so i can put it here a of x versus a of y dx then we know it's going to be from a to b pi r squared but you have to be careful how this r squared will look like and it's going to be pi r pi r squared minus pi r squared and both r here would depend on x and it's going to be dx and now i will explain you what is going on here because it looks like a mess so the idea is you need to figure out if the object is uh, hollow or the object is full and the thing is because we have uh, because because we have a step over here happening we kind of stepped away on this region we have a gap inside so it's a pipe with the gap inside that's how you should see it there's a, a hollow space inside and then in yellow color we have actually the pipe that's how you should see it so your imagination should help you with this that's the interesting idea here that's why you should kind of push yourself to imagine how it's going to look like. Here it is. So it's a pipe hollow inside. That's when we call a, uh, the case called washer. Washer, well, also ring. I don't even like calling it different uh, notations because it's still a disk but with a hollow piece inside. When it's just a disk, we have pi r squared, right? But if there's a hollow space inside, you just subtract this hollow place. And that's why the pi r squared with the small r's happens. That's basically the empty piece. So filled, all filled, minus empty. That's how we do it. Pi r squared minus pi r squared. But in general, this is how it's going to be. You just need to see how you're scanning the object vertically, horizontally. From the chapter where you learn how to find the area between graphs, 
you know that this is the area over here this in yellow this area will be found top graph minus the bottom graph top graph minus the bottom then you also need to understand that the radius is actually bigger here it is here is the radius the radius is not just the yellow piece anymore the radius for the 3d picture is this this is my big r big r imagine that it's all filled in so it's solid this small r is everything hollow so empty piece inside that's how the pi r squared minus pi r squared shows up now we need to figure out how to write down the notation for this and it's going to be this way what is the top function over here and i and i did sign it as you remember one over x cubed here it is here's my top function one over x cubed the bottom function is y equals zero but then the one more bottom function here it is is y equals minus four so actually you need to first find the big r and the big r will be all this area all this area thus all the area will be top function minus bottom function where the top function is one over x cubed and the bottom function is minus four that's what is happening here that's the most confusing confusing part to imagine that the big radius comes from all of this height and this height is a distance between the function the top which one over which is one over x cube minus the function the bottom which is y x minus four so it's technically speaking one over x cube plus four let's write it down equals we're going to have integral from three to nine I like to kick pi out of the integral because you can factor it out anyways and you have r squared minus r squared the big r is the radius when we imagine that the object is not hollow which is solid the top function 1 over x cubed minus minus 4 so that's top minus bottom imagining that we are working with a solid 3d object but well, we're not working with a solid 3d object we took the whole radius right now but actually we need to subtract the radius which represents the empty piece of the object so what is the radius of that empty piece of the object this radius r equals to 4 right you can see how big this radius is this radius is 4 how do I know it's 4 you can still do the difference of areas and uh, the difference of functions top minus the bottom so big R I do like this big R is 1 over x cubed minus negative 4 small r small r on the other hand will be the top function the top function is x-axis that's y equals 0 minus and the bottom function is negative 4 that is what is going on here so that's a pretty challenging problem I would say so again how do you know the top function minus the bottom function the top function over here is y equals 0 and the bottom function over here is y x minus 4 so big R we already wrote it down small r is what is that let's calculate 0 minus minus 4 is just 4 but i'll write down for you 0 minus minus 4 and now both should be squared because it's pi r squared minus pi small r squared when the first radius is a solid object and the second radius is an empty object let's call it empty or hollow which one you like but the idea is still the same with scanning the same way top minus the bottom if we're using the x case and finally the x this is super confusing so try to go back to the graph and look at it again how did it look like what is happening 
And if you want, I can draw it for you again, the 3D picture, a little bit nicer. X axis. And here is the 2D shape over here. Then we stepped away, as you remember. We stepped away. And have a pipe. Here is my pipe. The pipe has two circles, big circle and small circle. The big circle, you imagine that it's uh, filled in object, so the solid one. So the big capital radius will be this function minus the function y equals minus 4. Uh, because we're not rotating around x-axis, we're rotating around y equals minus 4. x-axis is over here, like this. So the big radius will look like this. The big radius is 1 over x cubed minus y equals minus 4. That's the big radius. And this is the area that looks like this. Like we don't, we imagine that nothing hollow inside. Then to figure out the hollow piece, I'm looking over here. And what I'm seeing is the top function, which is y equals to 0. And the bottom function, which is y equals minus 4. So the small radius will be 0 minus minus 4. Does it make sense? And then to find the area or the volume of the rotation, I will have pi r squared minus pi r squared. The total solid, my, the total solid volume in 3D minus the total empty volume in 3D, pi r squared minus pi r squared inside of the integral. That's what is happening over here. Now let's simplify and finish calculations. Now it becomes just simple calculus. Integral from 3 to 9. And we're working with 1 over x cubed plus 4 everything squared minus 4 squared dx. Square of some formula hits here. Hi. From 3 to 9, we're going to have square the first term. x to the 6 at the bottom plus double product 2 times 4 times 1 over x to the 3 plus square the second term which 16 and minus 16 from the last term so at least 16 go away that's nice and then this piece is 8 so we're actually working with simple functions which we can integrate it becomes pi x to the minus 5 over minus 5 plus 8 x to the x to the minus 3 the minus 2 over minus 2 and then the bar from 3 to 9 carefully plug in the top and the bottom and you are going to have something like this pi and then 1 fifth 1 over 3 to the 5 minus 1 over 9 to the 5 plus 4 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over 9 squared which is approximately remember area should be positive pi times 0 0.395881 which is approximately 1.2437 units cubed Remember that the area should be positive. If you end up to be with a negative answer, you probably must stop something with top minus the bottom or a small radius minus big radius. That's kind of the idea. Check what kind of mistake could happen. But I would say that calculations at the end is just uh, very technical. That's not the problem. I would say explaining it is the problem. Imagining it in 3D is the problem. Try to push your brain to imagine the 3D picture. Don't see that this is some kind of geometry going on. See that you're rotating some physical object in 2D around uh, in the air, around some kind of axis. How it will look like? It kind of looks like a pipe with an empty piece inside. So you first fill it in and it becomes solid. And then you just subtract the empty part. And that's how you get a difference. Pi r squared minus pi r squared. Hopefully it was a little bit less confusing than I believe it is. And let me know. See you next time in my other videos.